Welcome. My name is Andre. I'm a student at Dakota State University going in production and animation. The video you're about to watch is produced for MCOM 353, a course on digital media communications. My project, Animation in Photoshop, is about being able to make animation in Photoshop without using Adobe After Effects or Adobe Animate. If you'd like to leave any comments, please do. Thank you. So here we are guys, making an animation in Photoshop with you, without using Adobe After Effects or Adobe Animates. And it's a little bit of a beginner level to make an animation in Photoshop. But if you like to draw a lot on Photoshop and you want to make an animation without moving uh, your background image or anything like that to Adobe After Effects or Animate, this will be the best solution. And it uses a little bit of the both uh, applications that I just mentioned. So here's how we're going to begin. We are going to begin with 1920 by 1080 pixels with 72 resolution. Uh, we can make it, actually let's go 100. And let's name it... So let us create now. Here, this is how it will basically look. Uh, and also, if you have your uh, background image, anything like that, you would basically start off like this. Um, you would usually want to have your image, background image, say, uh, set already as a JPEG and already put on here because you don't want that other mess in here. It's going to be a little bit difficult to. Uh, concentrate on how to make your animation or while you're creating your animation. So what helps you create your animation is a timeline. So the way to start is you'll go to Windows and you will go to Timeline. Here is what makes your animation. So we're gonna create a video timeline so you'll click on that and what would happen is it would unlock that background layer and I already put it on here and so I'm gonna create call background and let's talk about the layout of our timeline here so here we have the zoom in and the zoom out of the track where we're gonna have our animation here is our play button here is our back to beginning button. We also have the uh, slow move forward button. This also helps you kind of to move to a different track or a different frame when you're creating your motion. So it's kind of a bit easy, easier. Here we have the cut tool for cre uh, cutting our track and then I'll create a new track from that old track. Uh, here we have the volume and we're gonna go uh, over the audio track after we create our short animation so another thing that helps you create your animation is this little um, setting taskbar and we're not gonna really use all this we're just gonna use this giant square here and we're gonna use the render video So first, let's go over of the different setup that you want your um, track to be set up to. Um, we're going to go to that setting taskbar, and then we're going to use panel options. Here at panel options, it helps you to resize your thumbnail and your timeline um, the way you like to have it in units. Um, if you have it in none, it would be a lot like Adobe Animate. You'll have just circles or these tiny squares uh, just to show you that this is where you placed your motion and then your next motion and all that. Um, so let's go to click one of the sizes just to see a change in our timeline at how it would look. And a lot of animators usually like to work in time code which is frames per second or frame number. Frame number is usually used for stop motion though. So let's just click on that and see the different change that we have. So here it is. This is how it will look. This is our frame number. 
and this is the different size of the thumbnail. I'm just going to go back and reset it the way I want it to. So here I have my uh, thumbnail size to large and I like to work frames per second. Another thing you would like to change is, this is always a default setting that you would want to fix before you start making your animation, before you go all berserk and crazy. We animators like to work in either 24 frames per second or 12 frames per second when we create an animation. So you'll go to the setting and you'll click on set timeline frame rates. Here you'll type either 24 or you can go down to this arrow and then there's 24 frames per second or 12 and I'm going to just set it up to 12 frames per second and there it goes. So here's our 12 frames in our one second. If we zoom in a little bit more, there's 11, and this is our 12th frame. So, so this is how I like to begin. I'm going to shrink this to my one second, because we're going to make a one second video. You can also use this to sh shrink it in your thing. Your tab here would shrink with this um, track. Zoom in. Just close one second. So here it is. I'm going to create this one second little short motion for you so you kind of understand how the handle goes. So we're not going to create a motion in this background. First we're going to click on the track here by the little video thing and we're going to click new video group. Here at the new video group it would also be right here for you and we're going to call it motion and since it's already highlighted we're going to create a layer. With this layer we're going to make our animation or our motion and let's kind of line it up with our background layer here. So here, uh, this is what I like to do. Um, I would cut my frames. And what would happen is you, it would cut the frame, but then it would have them both highlighted. So when you go to the next one, you can still continue cutting it. This is, I would like to, I like to do this because if I don't want one of the tracks and it's just like too much for me to, to just kind of go back and erase it, I can just delete that. So here we have our track and this is the way I kind of have it set up already. I have cut all the frames in the track so it kind of looks like this is what I want it to be and on this first track we're gonna draw our first motion woohoo so here with the first motion you would look at it and then it would disappear okay so now what so Here's what we're going to do. You'll click on the next track, and then you'll go to that setting panel, and you'll say enable onion skin. Here, your uh, last part of the motion would reappear, but it'll appear a little bit more, not as clear. So if we go back, you can see the difference. See how black it is? And then it's faded. It's very faded. But this kind of helps you create your motion to see where you were last from. And I like that a little bit better. So in our next track, we're going to just continue to create our motion. And what would happen is the frames, uh, the onion skin will just continue to move. So if you move to the next one, your second part of the action will be faded too. Um, you can't draw if you have it on the last frame 
uh, when you move up to the next frame, you can draw because you are on that old you're on that old frame, so you want to continue on the next frame that you're gonna draw. So here guys, I have created my animation. Um, you can also look at these separate. You can also do this. Basically view which one you want to view. But basically, now we're going to start on our um, sound, uh, which is going to help us create a better animation without being silent. So let's go to, you'll click on the track area right here, that, the down arrow, and you will say, add audio. So here I'll take you to your... Uh, your um, folders and stuff and I'm gonna go to download because that's where I have it I'm gonna open that file and it kinda creates a big two second or eight second file so you'd want to just move this a little bit to our one second. You might want to shrink it later because it's you might have to move it to the part where it's at, where it makes the sound, where the motion is. So to make it so you can hear the sound, you can click here on the track, and then you click volume. There it is. Uh, if you want to continue playing your video, you'll just go to setting and then loop playback. Basically allowing you to replay back your motion. It kind of sounds good right now, but it's kind of too early for that sound to make a splash. Because the splash is kind of starts right here. And what we want to do is what we want to shrink this down a little bit. And we want to grab the track and just move it. So if we play it, so that sounds pretty good right now. Um, to finish off this uh, video. Um, is to finish off your animation and save it or if you want to make it a video you would go to your uh, setting tab right here and you'll say render video so the way you, ha you want to have it set up is you want to name it and then and then you want to select the folder that you want to put it in uh, so you kind of know because it's going to move it to your computer and it's going to be hectic to find it if you don't know where you're putting it uh, you would want to have it in H.264 is a perfect setup for it and HD 180 perfect uh, 1920 by 1080 is what I created and that's what I wanted uh, another thing is the range it says work area 0 to 11 sometimes it would do that but sometimes it would not even show your image, but it would show your audio track. You just, all you hear would sound. So I like to say all frames. And here it is. And then you can just render it. Here it render your video. And then you just want to go back and find it just to make sure that's the way you want it.
Uh, to continue replaying it back also, if you're on the um, QuickTime player, you would want to say Control L, and then you would want to play it, and it'll just continuously keep playing it. That kind of sounds weird, but you kind of get it. If you want to fix it later, you can. It sounded better on when I was doing it on Photoshop, but it kind of sounds different now. So here you go, guys. This is how you make an animation on Photoshop. Good luck to you all uh, who are going into animation. And uh, try ed every options that you have to make an animation. But this is kind of a beginner level, so I would try starting with that and then continuing on. Thank you, guys.